After almost a decade of campaigning, D-Day veterans have finally been able to see their dream of a national memorial in Normandy to honour their fallen comrades become a reality. It was officially opened at yesterday's D-Day commemoration event, but due to travel restrictions, many British veterans and their families had to watch the ceremony virtually. Breakfast regulars may know one of them very well indeed, Harry Billinge. He raised tens of thousands of pounds for the memorial and Breakfast John Maguire was with him to watch the grand opening. Thank you, lads, and God bless you. Thank you. He always insists that he's not a hero, but try telling that to the friends and supporters who joined Harry Billinge to witness his dream become a reality. As a teenager, he was one of the first onto the Normandy beaches on D-Day, and he's been back since most recently for the 75th anniversary two years ago, when he sat on the BBC breakfast sofa and told us of the comrades he'd left behind. I was lucky. I'm here. All the heroes are dead, and I'll never forget them as long as I live. Yesterday, he returned to the sofa. Sun shines on the writers. The guest of honour at a special screening of the official opening of the British Normandy Memorial, a cause he's championed and raised tens of thousands of pounds to build. I want to say a very special good morning to one of our greatest champions, Mr Harry Billinge, who I know is watching with his many friends in St Austell this morning. Harry, you've been an inspiration and we do thank you. He will talk to everybody uh, and anybody, and that's why he's raised so much money for this monumental memorial to those that gave their lives. Harry is a big part of our community, and for him, to, for us to be able to be here with him is, is amazing. Because he does it from his heart, and he's done what he does for the boys that didn't come home, so, uh, yeah. He's out collecting, he's out collecting, was it, three or four times a day in that market, all day, collecting, he's there all day yesterday, he was collecting, and, all, yeah, all weekend. So yeah. he dedicates his life save him for like, his past um, comrades and that. He would, of course, have loved to be there to touch the stones that bear the names of 22,442 people under British command who died in the Battle of Normandy, those that never made it home. Despite having to watch via satellite link, this in no way obscures the enormous regard and admiration in which we hold our veterans or diminishes our debt of gratitude to the more than 22,000 men and women whose names are now permanently inscribed in stone in this place of honor above Gold Beach. Instead of Northern France, Pa near St. Austell, and the next best thing, as Harry was surrounded with those he loves and who love him. I can't thank millions of people, millions who've written to me from all over the world and who have subscribed to that memorial. That means more to me than anything. To everyone who ever given a, a small amount, to those who have given a great amount. I really humbly thank you, one and all. Don't call me sir. My name's Harry. Oh, I spent most of it crying, didn't I? <laughs> I just really wanted him to be there on the opening, and I think that was... It's just so sad, but it was very powerful. I cry all the time anyway, so nothing new there. He's happy now that he's done what he needed to do. He's done an amazing job, hasn't he? Yeah. We're just absolutely so proud to have him here, to be honest, and he's just an inspirational character. He's just what he's done for the Normandy Trust, and also he does, he's just an inspiring man. Part of today's ceremony, forming the Guard of Honour, are men who wear the same beret and badge as Harry, modern-day commando engineers, men for whom Harry is a great inspiration. It's just the influence he has on us and sort of like trying to aspire to be as good as, as what those guys did on that day. It's just so inspirational and uh, just the sacrifice he made is just 
we wouldn't be where we are now if it wasn't for that. Do you hope to get over and see the memorial? Oh, no, I'll be there. I have to swim. <laughs> so, with the ceremonies over, how else would this 96-year-old spend his Sunday afternoon? Of course, raising even more money, now for an education centre at the memorial to teach future generations of the sacrifices made by his, the greatest generation. John Maguire, BBC News, Cornwall. Lovely to see Harry again as well, wasn't it's it? It's been such a long campaign as well. Yeah, nice just to see wonderful. the end of it, yeah.